Good day and welcome in again to another edition of our video podcast, Musings from the Mountains, presented by WSports.com. I'm your host, Keenan Cummings, with my sidekick, Jared. And guys, we've been waiting for it. It's been the storyline. Uh, weird that it's not been talked about more during fall camp and leading into the season. But we have a quarterback. We have a quarterback one. Jared, any surprise to you that, that it's Jared Dagey that gets the job? Absolutely no surprise. I mean, it pretty much was expected uh, pretty much most of the offseason. I mean, he came in uh, at the tail end of last year um, after some average performances from Austin Kendall. And uh, I don't want to say he lit the place on fire, but he did a much better job, in my opinion. Um, so, no, no surprise at all that Daigie is quarterback one. 818 yards, seven touchdowns, three interceptions, completed 65% of his passes. You know, started the last three games of the season for West Virginia, and I think what got most people excited about that is in those three games, he led West Virginia to two victories. And both of those were on the road, games they were not favored to win, and gave West Virginia really some positive momentum heading into the offseason. Um, I do like that Neil Brown took all that away, took the emotion out of it, made this more of a long-term sprint, uh, made Deggy win this job, and he did that. You know, I think that that's encouraging for West Virginia for a lot of reasons. You look at the two quarterbacks, I think the biggest thing that set them apart, at least in my eyes, you look at the raw numbers, you know, of course, you know, Kendall's going to have more because he played more games. But if you look at the raw numbers, they're pretty similar. The one thing that really set them apart, at least in my eyes from watching them, is Daggy's not necessarily a better scrambler, but he's a lot better at keeping plays alive and keeping his eyes down the field. As you saw, and the penultimate touchdown in the Kansas State game to Bryce Wheaton. That was all Daggy moving around in the pocket, extended plays, keeping his eyes downfield. And I think that element is something that Kendall really struggled with at times last year. So I think that one in the job, he was more productive. Neil said that he led more touchdown drives. And that's going to that's gonna get you the job. I mean, 10 times out of 10. So I think West Virginia, you got that wrapped up. Uh, Neil's going to give him a long leash. I think that's important as well. This isn't going to be one of those situations where he has a, he falters a few times, is going to lose his job, has to worry about Kendall over his shoulder. But it was encouraging. Could have been some coach speak, but it was encouraging that Neil did say that you know, he's comfortable with Kendall. So if something would happen, he is comfortable there. But West Virginia has their quarterback one. They're moving into the first game. Some other position battles too, though, we got some resolution on. West Virginia has their offensive line. Junior Uzebu was able to beat out uh, Brandon Yates. Brandon Yates is still going to play, but was able to beat him out. John Hughes is your other right tackle. So their two tackles are two, two young guys. Between them, they played nine snaps last year at tackle. So that, that's a concern for West Virginia. But that's what's going to happen when you lose over 1,600 snaps uh, in your two starters from a year ago. Any other position moves, position battles you thought really stood out, Jared? Uh, nothing major. I just – you touch on the offensive line. Uh, you know, Ch I, I mean, obviously Neil Brown mentioned this in his press conference about a week ago, but Chase Barron, uh solidifying that center position I think will be huge, especially because uh, I believe he's a redshirt senior this year, and he's so making him by far probably um, one of the longest tenured Mountaineers, one of the most veteran Mountaineers on that front line, and that's going to be huge. It's going to pay dividends for the run game come this season. Yeah, one position move of note, Tay Mayo slid over to safety. Uh, be interesting to see the fit there, but I do take that as an encouraging sign for the corners that you're moving a corner to another position. So I, th I think that might just speak to uh, how well Daryl Porter has performed uh, in fall camp. I mean, it seems like every day we were hearing his name, and so Neil Brown said he would definitely be playing this year. Um, I think it's most likely he'll be see some actual time this year. Yeah, it's, it's one of those years. This is a weird year. I do something every year where I track people's red shirts. Who's going to red shirt? Who's going to play? And it actually has been pretty accurate, you know, since the red shirt rule was in place. This year it's weird. I had to switch it up mid midstream. Now everybody can play, and I do think a lot of people are going to play. But really what, what you're looking for is which ones are actually going to see significant snaps at their positions. Right now, my best guess would probably be the five guys that would fit that mold would be a key mesador on the defensive line. Probably Sean Martin on the defensive line. As you mentioned, Daryl Porter, Zach Frazier. And the fifth one, I'd pro my, my personal take, even though it's a log jam, is Sam Brown. Those are my five guys I think that, that are probably going to see the field in, 
you know, more than a just special team slash you get in there for a few plays type deal. But West Virginia's got youth. They got depth and youth. I tried to make a new word. They got duped, and uh, you're feeling pretty good. You look up and down this depth chart. I know it's not set in stone yet, but it's a lot different than it was a year ago. I mean, there's a lot of talent at a lot of different spots. I'm not saying West Virginia is ready to win the Big 12, but I am saying the ship is moving in the right direction, which is what you want to see. A hundred percent. And, I mean, it definitely speaks to, you know, we heard this all the time last year about, you know, Dana Holgerson left the cupboard bare. It really speaks a lot to the recruiting efforts that Neil Brown and his staff has, have really gone through in rebuilding this program, if you will, over the past year and a half. Yeah, and getting creative with it too. You know, bringing in transfers, bringing in guys that maybe will set out a year to play like Alonzo Dye. You know, perfect example. They knew they were going to be thin at safety, so they go out and get a guy that can play safety. Yes, he doesn't help you last year, but he's your starting free safety right now. So done it creatively, done it a lot of different ways, and I think that, you know, Tony Fields and some other guys – you know, fit that mold. We're waiting on a few waivers still. Uh, anywhere between three to four guys that West Virginia is waiting on uh, could change the perception at some positions. We'll see how it goes. Uh, remember, this is a free year. Everybody can play. It uh, doesn't mean everybody will come back, but everybody can play. They don't lose a year of eligibility, so there's not a lot of risk involved with trying to get that waiver. So we'll see what happens in those situations. Should have some resolution hopefully here in the next few days, because West Virginia plays a football game next Saturday, uh, which is kind of, you know, a lot of us didn't think we'd get to this point. Switching gears real quick, 2022 recruiting is off and running. Yes, it was already happening before. Yes, there's plenty of offers out. But now coaches can formally contact recruits, and that's when things start to get interesting. You've already seen some new offers go out in the last couple days, a lot of contact, a lot of graphics, a lot of social media action. That's going to continue. Um, you're really going to start to get a clear picture of where the board, the ever-changing board, let me make that clear, but where the board sets. So we'll find that out together, you know, over the next couple of days, couple of weeks. And really with 2021 recruiting still going full blast, the one thing this pandemic has allowed is for the coaches to get ahead. You know, they're already well deep into 2022, 2023. And you would be at that point now, but they were doing this stuff back in May, June, you know, where you don't have a camp season, they were able to make up some time in a lot of other spots. So exciting times. Football will be here soon. We will, we will see you again soon as well. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of Musings from the Mountains.